a Facebook live event. Um, hang on one sec. Start over. Okay. Got it. Welcome to the Divorce Whisper Facebook Live event. I'm your host, Marta Papa, and I'm so glad that you're joining us today. We have this Facebook Live event um, the, on the first and the third Friday of every month. And our purpose is to, to introduce you to divorce experts that can help demystify divorce for you. The more you know, the more powerful you are and the less worried and fearful you are. And so that's, that's our goal here. So um, I invite a divorce expert um, to every, every other Friday to talk to us about if they had if they could only answer one, if they could only give one piece of advice to someone they really cared about that was going through divorce, what would that piece of advice do be? So um, we're going to be talking with Greg Bruff here, and he is a um, he's a very experienced family law attorney in in uh, St. the St. Louis area. And he does other kinds of law, and I'm going to ask him what those are when we when I ask him more questions and we talk a little bit more. Um, but I'm but I'll 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 let him introduce himself. Greg, you want to say hi to the listeners? Hi. <laughs> um, look how nice his office is. I just I'm impressed. I think it looks so nice. So, um, Greg, let's start with the the one question. If you could only give one piece of advice out of all the pieces of advice that you could give what to someone going through divorce or considering divorce, what would that piece of advice be? Well, it may seem counterintuitive, but my advice as an experienced divorce attorney would be stay out of court. Um, good things I, don't happen in court. I couldn't agree more. What a great way to say it. And, and you're right. I, I, you know, a, a standard that I used to hear when I was in law school was good lawyers keep their clients out of court. <laughs> That's the best thing you can do for your lawyer or for your client. So tell us more about that. Why do you say stay out of court? Well, I think I've got sort of my elevator speech that I give to clients. Okay. Um, All right. and, and that basically consists of the court process is you going in and saying as many bad things as you can about your spouse. Yeah. Listening to your spouse say as many bad things as they can about you. Yeah. And then having a judge who did not want to hear it in the first place make decisions <laughs> that are going to affect you. So if that's what you want to do, we can do it. But it's really the last way I think you should get the Oh, I think that's so wise. And I, I totally agree that the judges don't want to hear it. They don't want to have those trials. They don't want to be responsible for coming up with parenting plans for children that they don't know. And, and they just get to hear somebody talk for an hour or two hours, the other person talk for an hour or two hours, and then they're making lifelong decisions about children and their lives and how they're going to parent how they're going to be parented and who's going to parent them and how they're going to divide all the assets in a fair way. And they don't really know the value of all those assets or who, who what person really should take that asset. Um, and so it's, it's a difficult process for them. They put it off, put it off, put it off, writing those judgments for six. And I, the longest it's ever taken me is nine months to get a judgment after the trial, nine months, we didn't know where the kids was going, going to school and we didn't know about child support, who keeps the house. It was, it was a crazier nine months than the nine months leading up to the trial, um, just waiting for the judge to decide. So um, I totally agree with you. So you answered our one question. Can you tell us a little, a little more about what, what you do, what your practice is? Well, I've, I've been in practice for 44 years. Which I still find hard to believe, but I do too. <laughs> um, but I, I started out um, doing a little bit of everything. I've done personal injury, I've done bankruptcy, I've done corporate formation, um, you name it. I've probably done at least, probably screwed it up at least once. But uh, but my it's almost as though I think my my calling has found me because I I um, got involved in uh, family court mediation. Um, and, and really kind of came to the realization that, that 
there was a way to help people through this process. Um, and and um, I, I think one thing that a divorce attorney really needs to keep in, in mind is that just the difficulty the, of what it is to go through a divorce. And, and um, you know, one, one thing that jumps out, and I know I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here uh, with you, Marta, but um, there's always one party that's ready for it and one party that's not ready for it, or at least not yeah. ready for it yet. And, and when you're dealing with the party who is ready for it, they've had time to think about it. They've sort of made their plans. Um, you know, they're ready to walk out the door and then they announce it to the other party who is like the deer in the headlights of, yeah. now what, now what do I do? So you've got, you've got people that are a really vulnerable state um, yes. that come to see their lawyers. And, and I, I obviously won't mention any names for fear of getting sued, but you and I both know that there are attorneys that take advantage of that situation. And, and um, you know, they, they uh, my, my amateur psychology theory is that, that they realize that their, um, that their clients are in a state of anger and, and rather than letting that pass and letting it subside, they feed it. It's like, yes, we'll get even for you. We'll take them to court. We'll make them wish that they never did whatever it was that bothers you. <laughs> and, and so they create this illusion that that's what's going to happen in court. And meanwhile, the attorney, you know, the billable hours are rolling in. Um, and, and at the end of the process, you know, it's not like one client walks out of the courtroom and says, boy, that was sure money well spent, you know, beating up my spouse. Yeah. Um, it's always like, you know, I think pretty much everybody who takes it through the litigated process looks back with regret. Yes. And, and I don't blame them if they look at the attorney and say, why did you, why didn't you give me some alternative to this? So I, I've really focused on what those possible alternatives are. Um, and, and uh, you know, once again, to explain the, to the viewers, there, there's sort of a continuum of things that you can do if you want to get divorced. And, and at, at what I consider to be the good end of the continuum is, um, resolving things directly with your spouse. I mean, if you can do it, and it's a difficult process, but if you can do it, the ideal situation is you sit down, you know, the so-called kitchen table divorce, you sit down, talk with your spouse, work it out. One of you writes it up into some form of an outline form, and then you take it to an attorney whose job is really just to fill out the forms and turn it into a legal divorce. The, the attorney isn't really involved other than just as a clerk to obtain the legal divorce. Um, sort of the next rung uh, up the ladder going in the wrong direction, but, but, but still at the good end is, is mediation where you have a neutral person, and, and I know you've done thousands of them, but you go to a neutral person and their job is not to decide for you, but rather to help the two of you decide what it is that you want to do. Um, and then the, the next step up would be a collaborative divorce. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the hallmark of a collaborative divorce is that both parties and both attorneys sign an agreement that says, if this case is going to be litigated, both attorneys will withdraw and the clients will have to start all over again with, with new attorneys. And, and um, I'm sure you're familiar with the various philosophical arguments that, that, that attorneys have on this topic. And, yep. and um, usually the argument that I get heard a lot is from an attorney that says, well, why don't we just try collaborative? And then if that doesn't work, we'll go to court and litigate. And it's sort of like, you don't get it if that's the way you're looking at it. Because uh, okay. if, if you feel that way about it, there's always going to be this specter hanging over the room of, you better do it my way or I'm going to court and the judge yeah. is going to make you do it my way. So, so the parties are, you know, you're back to the old um, sort of standard of who wins the divorce. And I guess, I guess the other thing I've learned is there is no winner in a divorce. Um, you know, and, and so anybody that starts out thinking, well, what do I need to do to win? Yeah. Um, I, I guess from the attorney's perspective, winning is getting the most stuff. Well, what good is getting the most stuff if your kids will never speak to you again and you know your spouse you know hates you and you know i mean the, the getting the most stuff is probably the really the least significant thing that happens in a divorce the, the, the most and best thing that comes out of, of a divorce 
is just the relationship of the parties as as needs be. I mean, there are some divorcing uh, people that can go their separate ways, don't have kids in common, never have to see each other again. But a lot of them have kids in common, and 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 um, you know, as as I'm sure you've used, you if you can get them to do a paradigm shift or sort of a um, a time shift and say, what's it going to feel like when your daughter gets married? Are you going to be on one side of the church and your ex-spouse is going to be on the other side of the church and yeah. your, your daughter is going to be like torn between, well, if I'm nice to dad, mom's not going to like me. And if I'm nice to mom, dad's not going to like me. Yeah. Or are you all going to be there celebrating a, you know, a wonderful event in life? So, yeah. and I think if you can get, get um, divorcing parties to start thinking ahead and get out of the, the present moment and the present pain, um, you do a better job of, of getting them to think creatively about how things could be resolved. Wow, I couldn't agree with you more. That's so true. Um, and, I, and I love what you say uh, um, in, in collaborative law. And I would say that's the same with mediation, um, that if, if one person says, um, well, we'll try mediation and if it doesn't work, we'll just go hire lawyers. Or we'll try collaborative law and it doesn't work, we'll just hire lawyers. I, I'm so glad you said it. if somebody says that, then they don't really get it. They don't, they don't really get it. They're doing something that's going to cost less. They think it doesn't always cost less, but they're doing something they think is going to cost less and, um, <clears throat> and give them what they want give them their way. And if it doesn't give them their way, then they're willing to use the guillotine to, to get their way. They're willing to pull out all the stops, spend the kids college money, tap into their 401k, have grandma help pay for it. There's so many, I have so many payments coming in from grandparents. Um, like they've already tapped their parents and now they're going to grandma. So, um, yeah, they, they don't get it. It's just a step along the way to see if they get what they want. Instead of being committed to, you know what, we want to stay out of court. That is our common goal here. We want, maybe you don't even have the common goal of the divorce. One person wants the divorce, one person doesn't. Um, but it only takes one person to say, I don't feel like being married to you right now. And the divorce is going to happen. And the only question is, who makes the decisions about how to divide property? how to divide the parenting responsibilities in time and money in the future, maintenance and or child support. So it's not about whether it's going to happen. It's about it's going to happen. Who do you want to make the decisions? And if you and if Jack and Jill, I'm just going to use that for the name. If Jack and Jill want to make the decisions, then there shouldn't even be a spot in their brain that says, well, if this doesn't work out, I'm going to do CLAD and then if CLAD doesn't work out, then I'll go go have a trial. No, no, we're going to do this. We're going to do this not as an experiment. We're going to do this because this is really the best way to do it for us and for our children. You know, I, um, I, I totally agree with every thing you said about the kids and um, and I just had somebody uh, who a, a couple that were mediating and their daughter was getting married and and the daughter didn't want either parent to come because she, they'd been fighting so much and she and and you know the dad broke down in tears and I'm like you know what let's give the daughter a call. Let's tell them what you're doing. You know, you're getting divorced. She's mad. And she's, she's mad at both of you right now. And let's tell her the actions that you're taking to try and make this, um, make this a plan that you guys come up with. That's, the, the second be best thing for the children is a happy family all around. But if you can't have that, I mean, it only takes one person to disturb that. If you can't have that, then what's the next best thing? And that's, well, Jack lives here, Jill lives here, but they still come together and have dinner. They still come together and go to movies on on a Saturday night at a park where they show it on a sheet out in the, out in the, um, hanging on the trees. You know, it's a, it's a family, a family picnic COVID style. You've got your six feet and there's six feet from the other pod um, or going to Shakespeare in the park or, 
um, every once in a while, not all the time, but every once in a while doing a whole family thing together, the kids just love that and feel safe. And, and when they see mom and dad being respectful to one another um, and not trying to win the children away, then the children the children feel like they have permission to love both mom and dad. And that's exactly what they want to do. They want to love, they want permission to love both mom and dad. And when, just like you said, when you, when you get on the stand and you say uh, as many bad things as you can about your spouse and your attorney's telling you to do that, you want custody. You got to show that that other person is a louse. And then the louse does the same thing to, to the other parent. And, and then, and then, that extended family that's in the room to that's in the courtroom to support their child or grandchild or family member. Well, they could never forgive the things that husband says about wife. They can never forgive wife or what wife says about husband. Well, my lawyer told me to say it. I mean, now the extended family has gone for the children or they have to pick one side and not the other side. And so it has so many detrimental effects down the road, like the, throwing the, the stone in the water and the ripples that it makes out um, outward from that first drop in the water, um, that doing it as an experiment means you don't get it. Doing it as, as look, we're, we're going to make the decisions here. We need legal information so we can do it. We need a lawyer to draft it up so we can get divorced. But we, we're, we're going we're gonna to do this because we're going we're gonna to concentrate on our kids. And most of the research, all, all the research um, that I've seen says the people that focus on their children, the rest, of the, the rest of the division decisions they need to make just seem to come easier. If they focus on their children, the divorce doesn't get so nasty because they're focused on their children. And then they do better in their own divorce. They fight less about the ottoman and, and the dog and the footstool and the, the rug at the bottom of the steps and trash cans. I mean, really, we're going to put trash cans on your personal property list? Um, so, so if they focus on the children, then they really do better, um, uh, with the divorce themselves and getting, and, and getting past the anger to how are we going to co-parent? I'm, 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 I'm talking too much, but I'm, I'm going to say one more thing and then I'm going to turn it back over to you, Greg. Um, I just did a 40 hour divorce me mediation training last week. It was long. It's five days in a row, nine hours a day. I'm there 12 hours a day. It, it was long. And um, I, I wanted to get an update on a, on a website that everybody should write down, uptoparents.org, uptoparents.org. And it, and it was started by a criminal law lawyer at Notre Dame. Uh, and that's a big, long story, but it's a free website that talks to you, that talks to people, it kind of leads people through, you know, here, here are the pitfalls in divorce. Here's the, what the research says divorce does to children. Here's where you can take some power in your divorce so that it doesn't affect your children to think that the world is, an, is a dangerous place and they need to decide who's safe and who's not safe. Um, and that's the impact of divorce. Um, so it tells you how to avoid that. Um, and there was, a, there was a judge speaking on that. I, I looked at their late re, most recent videos to see if there was more new research in. And there was a judge from Indiana around Notre Dame um, who was speaking, being interviewed. And he said, you know, when I, he's a family law judge and he says, when I have people in, in, in my court and say, okay, we're ready for trial. He said, I tell them, you know, you, your, you have two relationships with your spouse. If you have children, one relationship is the, is the marital intimate relationship between Jack and Jill or John and Joe and Jane and Susie, whatever. Um, it's the intimate relationship between the two of you. And that is what you are, are breaking apart. That's what you're breaking apart. You're not going to be intimate anymore. You're going to live in two different houses. You're not going to be responsible for each other financially anymore. You're going to spend the money the way you want. And, okay, you're, you're apart. But you also have a relationship of co-parenting. And so the kids, and then it 
then it then the film you know goes into a kid climbing a tree uh, that the child you experience an ex-spouse all right after at the end of the divorce but your children never experience an ex-mom or an ex-dad and i'm like oh my gosh that's brilliant never would have thought of that i never would have thought of it as two two separate relationships and when you come apart as husband and wife, you don't come apart as co-parents. You still have to co-parent. Your, your children are depending on it. They want you to be that, that hammock underneath them or the umbrella over them that protects them and that dad's going to protect whenever he needs to. He's out of town. Mom's going to protect them. They got you. The, the, you know, your parents have you. They still have you. They just don't want to live together anymore, but they are still there for you. As, as though you're one big family. And I thought, wow, coming from a judge, coming from a judge. And I wanted to ask him, he was on tape, I couldn't. So, but I wanted to ask him, when you, when you tell them that, that's a paradigm shift for me. Like, wow, that's a huge thing to me. And, and, and I just heard it last week and I've been doing this for 35 years. And I, I wanted to ask him, um, when you tell people that, do they ever say, you know what, let's let's put that divorce date, let's put that trial date off for a month or two weeks. Let's let's just not pick the trial date for a minute and let's go out in the hallway and talk, or let's go to a restaurant and talk. Um, and and do the lawyers try and dissuade them from listening to you because the lawyers want a trial because they're on the verge and they're going to make fifty thousand dollars at this trial and blah, blah 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 and lots of billable hours blah, blah blah or do the lawyers sit and think oh i never even thought about it like that maybe i should talk to my client about that so i want to get to that judge and say hey how does how does that work because i'm certainly going to remind people of that because it makes a lot of sense to me what do you think about that I think that's a, a great way to sort of shift your thinking about it. Um, I, I um, some some of the work I like best is guardian ad litem work, where I'm appointed by the court to represent the interests of the children in a high conflict divorce. And um, you know, the the situation I'm forever running into is I'll have one parent come in and say, "My child has told me that they want to live with me." You know, and that parent will leave and the next parent will come in and they will say, <laughs> my child has told me that they want to live with me. You know, and then I get the child in and I say, you know, I've, I've, I've heard different things. What, what's going on in your house? And they say, God, I wish mom and dad had stopped fighting. I wish they'd get back together. And, yeah. and I can tell you, it's, it's pretty much uniform that every child thinks that somehow they're responsible. It's not yeah. logical, it's I emotional. Know but somehow they think they're responsible for the divorce. And, yeah. and the other thing is that they, they really don't take sides. They want both parents to be there after the divorce for yeah. them. They don't want to have to pick one or the other and, and yeah. lose one that way. That's so, right. You know, if, if parents knew that, you know, I, I agree with you. I think if they start looking at it from the standpoint of how did my kids see this divorce happening, yeah. that makes them make yeah. better decisions. Yes. Yeah, I think so too. I think so too. And, and I I agree with you about, you know, at the end of the divorce, really nobody's happy. Um, and I I I I still litigate um mostly because I want to know what the law is and what the judges are doing so I can bring it to the mediation table. It's not out of great desire. It's out of I need to stay, I need to stay in touch and with, with what the judges are doing and not doing. Um and 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 sometimes it comes to a trial. Most of the time it doesn't. Ninety five percent of the cases settle. Um, but where do they settle? You know, two days before trial, and I spent fifty grand. So the earlier you can settle, the better the better off you are. But when I think of how people walk out of the courtroom at the end of a trial, where I've been the attorney in a in a divorce trial, both of them are like. I don't know what word, word to use. They're, they're like shot down. They're, they're like deer in the headlights. They're just, I, I, it, it didn't accomplish anything. You know, saying bad things about your spouse that now 
now it's going to make other people hate your spouse and blah, blah. that it, it's a, no one walks out feeling like they're a winner and they don't even know what they're getting yet. They don't even know what the judge is going to decide. And they, it doesn't look like two winners coming out of that courtroom. They're crying and it is not pretty. And when I mediate in my office and people get done, it's a little bit of a celebration. I mean, sometimes they'll bring in a bottle of champagne. And I'm like, mm, I can't drink with you you know, go to the park a block away. Here's a blanket, go to the park a block away and, and open the champagne. I think it's, it's a great thing that a great peace offering that you're offering each other and, and do it. I, I just can't do it with you. The rules of ethics say I can't do it with you. Um, but those people are happy that it's over and they're happy with what they got. They're happy with where they're headed in their, in their life. Mediation just, and, and collaborative law, you just focus on the future. You don't focus on blame for the past. You focus on the future. And so they each have a plan and the house has already been refinanced and it, you don't have to wait for a judge to say, you got to refinance the house. They've already done all that. It's really over when, when they leave the last session. It's really over except for a Scrivener, writing it up, filing at the courthouse, getting service, judge signing it X days later. Um, so the way I see clients feel and act at the end of a collab or a, a mediation, it's totally different than what I see in court. Um, nobody comes to court with a bottle of champagne. You know, no, no. They, they take it away from them at the security. <laughs> they take it away. That's right. The sheriff's deputy's going to take it away from them. That's true. They might be. The sheriff's deputy intercepted it. But it's it's scary. Everything's on the line. You're afraid you're going to lose everything. You haven't slept for months. You're at your worst. You're just at your worst. And, 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 and nobody wins there. Another thing that, um, uh, up to parents did a, had had a little video on. You can just watch little videos, which uh, really open your eyes to what it feels like for kids. Um, and and they they had a little video that that said, you know, nobody wins in divorce. You it's not one person wins. You win together. Jack and Jill win together because you came up with a common agreement that you're both committed to following through on, not something the judge shoved down your throat. Or you lose together because you go to court and you hand that all your power away to somebody else who doesn't really remember it six months later when they're writing the the judgment and 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 really doesn't know what's best for your kids is it, it, kind of in the dark. And, and it, it, it's like they've heard one, one, first, um, one first rapid date and based on meeting the, the clients rapidly, now they're gonna make life, lifelong decisions for them. And, and we all know that that's, that's, not, that, that's not ideal. That's just not the ideal way to do it. I, I think one way somebody going through divorce might wanna look at it is, how many other people do I want to be involved in the divorce and, mm -hmm. and have a say in the divorce? And mm -hmm. to the extent that you can keep it as few as possible. I mean, I one thing that's kind of dawned on me over the years is that there are so many divorces contained within one divorce. I mean, there's there's a yeah. financial divorce and a spiritual divorce oh, and a mental wait, wait. divorce. And, and, and the legal divorce, which of course is what the attorneys are responsible for, in a way, it's kind of, you know, it's the end of the process and it's the one everybody focuses on, but it's really not the most important divorce that takes place. I mean, it, it's more of the, the mental divorce that, that you, you know, should try and deal with. And, and um, I mean, I, I like being a lawyer. I like what I do. Um, you know, there's a, a scene in the movie Philadelphia where Tom Hanks is yeah. asked, you know, why, why do you like being a lawyer? And, and he says, well, it's because every now and then, not, not frequently, but every now and then you get to participate in justice. And I kind of view mediation and that type of work as being every now and then you get to participate in putting a family in the right direction rather yes. than the wrong direction. Wow, that's awesome. That's, that's awesome, I love that, I love that. And, and yes, it is so many divisions. You're dividing so many things. Um, 
and 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 helping them focus on the future, a future that they want to wake up to, is 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 a gift really that you can give to them as a lawyer uh, that that some other lawyers don't 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 give them. Um, great. Do you have any other thoughts? Well, just just um, also the thought that litigation is all looking backwards. You know, who yeah. did what to whom, whose fault is it, that sort of thing. Yeah. Mediation and collaboration is looking forwards. Yes. What's our life going to be like after the divorce? How are we going to work with each other? Yeah. And, and then I guess the, the last sort of analogy or concept I, I want to get across is if you've got kids and you're getting divorced, view each other as business partners. You know, you're you're in the you're in the business of successfully raising your children. You're yes. not gonna bad mouth your business partner because it's like shooting yourself in the foot. So um, you know, maintain that. The process of getting married is removing the boundaries, removing the borders, becoming intimate, coming together. The process of getting divorced is is the opposite of that, where you're reestablishing these boundaries. But you can do it in a respectful manner and in a logical manner and not out of anger and not out of frustration. And if you do that, your, your life is going to be better in the future. It is. It is. And your life with the kids is going to be better. And your life with your in-laws or extended family or friends. If, if you don't make friends pick, you can both have friends. But if you say he's a doggone whatever, then they have to pick. They have to pick. And you may not be picked, um, and and that's 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 another loss for for the people getting divorced. Yeah. So we're right at the half hour mark. Um, any 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 last minute words of wisdom, nuggets of wisdom? Well, I think I think you've tapped me out on wisdom, but um, <laughs> I did want to thank you. I mean, I, I'm I'm honored to to be participating. Oh, that's in this. so and I, I, as you know, I think a great deal of you, and I think you've, you've had a great effect in the St. Louis area in, in putting putting the mediation concept forward and, and in practice. So I, I applaud you. you for doing oh, that. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you, and 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 you too, um, Greg and I have had. Uh, I, we we've had collaborative cases together. Um, we've we've helped each other with mediation cases. We've had clients in common, and um, and and he's a an, well. I, I describe you to people as he's an officer and a gentleman. He's an officer and a gentleman. He 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 treats you like like you are are honored in his life. And wow, what a what. I can't think of a better kind of friend to have than, than that. Um, and, and I appreciate what, what you've done with collaborative law and, and mediation in the St. Louis area. So um, we all started as beginners together and then it's just grown and grown and we've grown older and, and, it, and it's getting more and more established all the time, more and more established all the time. So um, uh, let me tell the, 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 the viewers that this, um, if you like this segment, um, you can view it again, or you can have somebody else view it, like a friend of yours that needs to hear this um, on YouTube. And so by Monday, over the weekend, my, um, my secretary, my legal assistant will be um, uh, posting this on, on, on my Facebook page, but she's also going to be posting it on, on my YouTube page. So if you go to YouTube and you type in Ask the Divorce Whisperer, um, <clears throat> all the videos that we've done so far will come up. And, um, and, and Greg and Greg's is going to be on the top. Um, and it's going, we're going to, to list his, his name, his phone number, his address, so you know how you can get to him. But in case you don't want to watch the YouTube one, can you give us that kind of information right now, Greg? So people who say, I trust that guy. I like that guy. I'm going to call him. Um, how could they get a hold of you? Uh, probably the easiest way would be to just give me a call. And I can give my phone number. Um, it's 314-725-0001. Okay, perfect. Um, and you're in the St. Louis area. And it's, uh, it's it, can you spell your last name for them? 
It, it's like the word rough with a B in front of it. It's yes. R-O-U-G-H. I, I get to say that a lot. So. I bet you do. And I, I do. And I, I get to say it too. My secretary saw your name. She's like, how do I say this? I'm like, like rough with a B in front of it. So um, you can watch this again or have someone else w watch it if you think it would be helpful to them. And then all of Greg's um, contact information um, will be there on the, on the YouTube video. So thank you so much, Greg, for taking time out of your busy, busy day, busy week, um, and 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 thinking philosophically ab about this stuff. If you if if you had to get a piece of advice, what are you going to do? That's kind of philosophical. So um, I appreciate your thought and effort in preparing for today and and giving people some some really wise ideas of how to move forward. In, in the way that's best for them and really all of their extended family, everybody around them. So I, so thank you so much, I appreciate it. And feel free to give Greg a, a phone call if you have a question or you think he would, be, he would be helpful in your case or someone else's case. Okay, with Thanks, that, Marta. my it's pleasure. Me. My pleasure. Fun, fun seeing you too. So um, we're going to sign off with that, and we'll we'll be back in two weeks. I don't remember who who's who's coming, but you can check our Facebook page. We'll be advertising who's um, who I'll be interviewing in in two weeks. So thank you so much, Craig, and and we'll say goodbye for today. Thank right. you. Thank you. Bye. Phone number, phone number, phone number.